Namaiku, my name is Fadva Wazwaz, and I wanted to begin presentation today, which is going to be transitioning to the new Hijri month on the Islamic calendar, Rabi al Awal. Um, it's hard to kind of think about this, but like a year ago, I began working on this theme and it's going to be titled The Divine Promise, Muhammad the Divine Promise. And I can't believe like a year, a Hijri year went by and we're still in the same situation. It was, it was extremely hard at the time when the news, you know, happened, you're seeing massacre after massacre after massacre and person was feeling devastated. So I'm trying to go back to that theme. As I transitioned to Rabi al Awal, I had I stopped at that time. But the coming month, Rabi al Awal, a whole Hijri year later, I will look at the divine promise. Again, I began at that, not too far away, but again, when we we're starting the month. Abir means spring, as in season. Al-Awal means the first, or the beginning, you might say. So Rabi al-Awal means first of spring, the beginning of spring. We look forward to spring. It's supposed to just be a celebration of joy, of things, of good things coming. It's an end to winter, symbol of sadness, difficult times. Consequently, the start of happiness or joy. Likewise, the month, Rabi al-Awwal, is the month where Prophet Muhammad, upon in peace and blessings, was born seen as an end to a period of darkness in the world and a beginning of joy, happiness, grace, and hope. Real hope, you know, not placebo hope, placebo uh, happiness, but real hope. I gave an explanation of why it's important that on this month we take time out. Obviously, we should be constantly talking about Prophet Muhammad, upon him, peace and blessings, and teaching. Because take that time to learn, to remember, to reflect, to give thanks to him, his family, and his companions out of love, appreciation, and Gratitude. As human beings, if we're not reminded, we forget not just our history or heritage, but those who sacrificed the most for us with their own lives in this world and in the next. Most importantly, give thanks to God for fulfilling his promise because he's supposed to be the divine promise to send us a purified guide to teach and nurture us. As we reflect on this month and position in the history calendar, the Islamic calendar, we will be reflecting on Prophet Muhammad's beautiful names, on him peace and blessings. So we can see during difficult times or sadness, one can connect to Prophet Muhammad, on him peace and blessings, learn from him how to connect to God. The aim is not to worship him, but as I mentioned more than once, particularly like in the article on hijab, he helps us to differentiate again somebody who's role modeling faith. We don't need somebody who's just going to give you placebo faith, but role modeling faith. He goes in with the issue again about light. He's going to be the light that is going to help us to connect to God truthfully and sincerely. So this came again, it's an expert from the book, God Intervenes Between a Person and Their Heart. This is the book that I published. Again, the teachers that contributed to this book are mentioned and acknowledged 
with respect and as the sources in the section for the sources. Those who are not mentioned, but not in any way, shape or form contribute whatsoever to these reflections or that book. Throughout, you know, the, my style of teaching is everybody has a different way. Many people, for example, the way that they teach faith, this is not again an attack or a jab, but they'll go on and on about the tricks of Satan, the traps of Satan, the, the tactics of Satan. And so there's an obsession with Satan to such a degree that literally when you have a disagreement or an argument with these individuals, literally they engage in those same set tactics of Satan, traps of Satan, and tricks of Satan. This is how they engage each other. And faith is like, just in case there's a God, uh, it's a safety net, we'll believe in God, because the worst case scenario is there could be, you know, there could be a God, and then we end up going to hellfires. This is kind of how people introduced faith. Believe in God just in case there's a hell, and a heaven is a safety net to protect us from the worst case scenario. But the whole time, again, the whole argument of faith was about tactics of Satan, tricks of Satan, traps of Satan. It's like their mind, their heart was full of knowledge upon knowledge. I think even Satan was probably taking notes from them what to do. But even when you got into a, a disagreement with them, they literally would start playing these tricks and traps and thinking like they got you and you're like, you didn't get me. You just, I, I see that you're, I just try to push you away. But, you know, again, this is how their mind functions and thinks. Quran gives us the insight on how to respond to Satan. It says, my Lord, I seek refuge with you from the whisperings of Shaitan. And I seek refuge with you, my Lord, lest they should come near me. So you're just supposed to stay away. So, you know, people impersonate who's in their heart. So if in their heart, their ego, they're having discussions nonstop with Satan, then that's literally how they engage in. They relate to people who they have misunderstanding or disagreement with. And you'll see it like, you know, uh, an example okay. would be like at a, at a national level. Kamala Harris like told us about how bad Trump is. Let's just say Trump is Satan. Okay, but I don't need to know about how bad Trump is. I need to know what are you putting on the table? The power you had, what did you do? That's what was missing kind of in that conversation. Same thing like with Netanyahu, how bad Hamas is. Or before that, Yasser Arif, whatever. The point is, okay, what are you what were you calling to? Before October 7th, it's calling for the destabilization of the entire Middle East. Knock out, knock down Iraq, knock down this country, knock down. It's calling for the destabilization of the country, the entire Middle East. So again, when people tell you about all these tactics of this person, that person, this person, they get you focused, zooming in on their traps and their tricks and this. Know that they have nothing to put on the table here. Nothing of weight, nothing of substance. And God is just, um, just in case. And sometimes we forge his name or we'll play around in doubt. Don't really know. We never really made a time or an effort or attempt to know. We're just going to play around in doubt. But then our focus is here. So when Prophet Muhammad upon him, peace and blessings, came, came again with standards, laws, by which to judge, to nurture society, to remove out darkness. 
I mentioned many times, rules, not relationships, cause rebellion. Relationships, not rules, cause chaos. So there was a lot of chaos, a lot of darkness. And he needed to first establish relationship with people, healthy relationship, where they were they were feeling safe. This is why he's one of the names. Was Alamin. So if you go to the uh, article that I mentioned here, it's important to understand not just that the trustworthy one, but the safe one, that people felt safe. So I did this article here. But religion, again, refers to the norms and laws used to judge one's action or others. Everybody has a religion. Atheist has a religion. It's just he doesn't use revealed laws, doesn't use divine scripture, but they have a religion. Religion basically or deen means the norms or laws that you use to judge one's action or others. Everybody, as I said, uh, has a way of life that they have ways of which they define good and wrong. The laws they accept to be held accountable to follow or uphold. What separates the two, meaning this and this, is simply what you consider to be of importance. The latter, meaning this, uh, the call away from faith, what you consider important is worldly earnings, status, acquisitions, enjoyment, pleasure. A search of, they expend all their powers and abilities of the heart, mind, and body. Each one, you know, makes a sacrifice. It's what they're sacrificing for. As for the afterlife, they're in fact, again, fun, play, mere pastime amusement, mental diversion, for which they cannot even spare a few moments of serious study. So why again, I got into the discussion, why study Islam? People used to come to me and they would tell me about this Islamophobia or that Islamophobia, and you'd be like, why study Islam? Religious rites are being performed as a matter of entertainment like a social club, you know. Discussions about denial, including denying God, are being engaged in as amusement. No one can spare a few moments from this worldly pursuits to consider whether he, she, they turned away from the truth. And if so, what would be its consequences? So for me, at a very early on, I was not drawn to the lectures on, um, again, the tactics of Satan, the traps of Satan, the tricks of Satan. Um, I, I, my mind doesn't process things that way, and I don't, I, I don't find like it works with me. If somebody starts playing these kind of games, it just out. My mind believes strongly. Faith has a strong argument. And I'd like to know what are the arguments of faith. I'd like to understand the Quran, I'd like to investigate the Quran, and quite a few scholars. I used to have those cassette tapes. I don't know if you remember what they looked like. Let's show you what they probably now you, you don't see them, of course. Now they're CDs and others. But they looked like this. So I had like hundreds of these tapes of scholars. And you'd listen to them, you know, they give a really nice end. That time there wasn't like YouTube, there wasn't. Uh, so I used to listen to these lectures. And they'd have a very in-depth, again, information about, they, they were not like, now you see, for example, Shia Peshaw on YouTube. Probably doesn't even know that he has that many millions of followers following. But initially, it was these cassette tapes. People would like 
record it and they would send it. And that was that was how you started to understand faith. So that what what I needed to know was what is the argument of faith? What does the Quran offer? You know. And the theme that I came up with for Prophet Muhammad actually was based on that. Beautiful prophet, beautiful messenger. So studying his character, studying the way he role modeled faith, the way he lived his life. Uh, so I'm not focusing on Abu Jahl, for example. Even though we should study Abu Jahl, but the focus should be on here, his teachings, laws, the way he interacted. And those who call the way of fought him, you could learn at a certain point, but the focus and the center point should be here. And importance for that, and this became again in my second book, Love is Deeper Than Words, I ended the canon of the book with 49.7, the verse, God has made, again, faith beloved to you and has made it beautiful in your hearts. He has made hateful to you unbelief, wickedness, and rebellion. Such indeed are those who walk in righteousness. As I mentioned, like with Prophet Joseph, on in peace, because his heart was full of faith, this was not a temptation. The call, I'm not talking about the prayer, I'm talking about the shayateen, the trips, traps, whatever. This was not a temptation. So people are always talking about the temptation of sin. And I mentioned one of the ways that Satan calls is he beautifies sin. But the reason it it's seen as beautiful is because we're empty with it. I mentioned that earlier. And the reason we're empty is because we never again took time and seriously studied the faith and, you know, try to like spare some moments, consider the arguments of faith, the book, the life of Prophet Muhammad or the, the messengers, such that we grew naturally and holistically with a love of faith in our hearts. And because when you love faith, anything that calls you away from it, because you find it precious, valuable, anything that calls you away from it, by its natural you know, flow, it becomes hateful. Unbelief becomes hateful, wickedness becomes hateful, rebellion becomes hateful. So like the tricks and the whatever can be played 24-7 doesn't really have an impact because your heart is full of love of faith. So everybody has a different way. Some people, again, it's they need to know the tricks of Satan and this is literally how they interact with you. Start playing these tricks and these traps and these uh, tactics. And then they go on stage and they'll start telling you about the tactics of Satan. And you're just like thinking they're wacko. Uh, my style, again, is teach here. What is the argument of faith? And study it seriously uh, and such that it enters our hearts and that which calls away from faith regardless how skilled they are because you know the argument of satan god tells us is weak why are we tempted by it because here it's empty here it's empty we don't have anything that's going to repel it that's going to say that's going to make it hateful so, for example, without mentioning names, you'll see somebody who's like the sexiest woman alive. Go to like uh, YouTube and say the sexiest woman alive or the sexiest man alive. For some, they're tempting. But when faith enters your heart and it's and it's beloved to you, you don't see the temptation. You see it as, as I mentioned in another video, I had deleted it because some people said to delete it. Uh, you see it as hateful. You see, you know, because they're dressed in a way that's aimed to treat other people as objects of manipulation. So you see it as hateful. You see it as thinking about people, treating them as objects, 
treating them in a way that misleads instead of open, genuine communication that's respectful and dignified. So it becomes as a natural. Um, and it's likewise, the Quran also tells us, again, everything reconciles with the, within the Quran. Like if you read, every verse reconciles. And you know, fairly never will Allah change the condition of a people to only change what's in themselves. So I mentioned here some of the scholarly commentary on this verse, but I ended it with, so what is the solution? Well, the solution is to turn to God. Ask him to purify your heart, remove the beautification of sin by asking God to do what? To make faith beloved to us. And this is again a prayer by Prophet Muhammad. So the solution for the beautification of sin, which someone is going to call you away, is not to learn all these tips and tracks and uh, tactics and all that of Satan, but it's to learn your faith. The character of Prophet Muhammad, the life of Prophet Muhammad, the arguments of faith. God says, study the Quran, investigate the Quran. So the solution, the beautification of sin, is the to listen to God, turn to God, and allow God, not you, because you're not putting sugar coating on faith, but to allow God to beautify your heart with faith such that it becomes beloved to you and anything that calls you away from faith becomes hateful to you and nothing can do that nothing can beautify your heart of faith than to study the life of prophet muhammad on in peace and blessings seriously genuinely asking god to help you do that this is why, again, in the book here, God intervenes from a person in their heart. The theme that I used for Prophet Muhammad is beautiful prophet, beautiful messenger. This is, again, not placebo beauty, which is like you're putting sugar coating on something that is ugly. But this is, again, the title, beautiful prophet, beautiful messenger, that... When we study his life and we see that he role modeled, he was on stage giving placebo this, placebo that, but he role modeled in action in his life journey, uh, listening and also teaching and nurturing and bringing laws that are essential and important to protect us from each other. And so what came out of that is people started to love faith and they started to hate, again, anything that calls us away from faith. That was the process of um, connecting people to God. So again, the solution for the beautification of sin is the beautification of faith and the way that we can allow faith to enter our hearts as we ask God simply to protect us from the whisperings of Shaitan, I, I don't really, I don't really like to sit down and study like all the tactics of that, as I said, but I do encourage to study again arguments of faith, the messengers, the prophets, and this takes us away from here again to a serious study where faith enters our hearts, and regardless. In what clothes or in what misapplication of faith or in what placebo, you know, this or that is thrown at us to mislead us, it's not tempting. So I encourage you in this coming month to reflect and to prepare for the study of the life of Prophet Muhammad. And as I get there, let me get to video. I believe it was this. No. Apologize. This is kind of not in sequential order. Here. So if you, read, if you search for the word promise in the Quran using the Arabic letters, this should be not yeah as in why, but um, like it, like wow, wow. So it's a 
A. And that I, I put white A, but someone said that's the wrong letter. You should put G. It's just sometimes people confuse the G with Rain. So it's Wad. Dead. So if you go to the Quran and just look for those letters, I'll probably show you. Okay, here. Maybe I should do it here. If you come here to the letters and just look for here, this letter right here. Let's start with Wow. And then look for Ain. Which is I saw it's bad, so I should. I wear glasses, so my apologies. I am not wearing them now. Oh. See, let me just expand this a bit because I cannot see. It's wow. Maybe you could see it better now. Ain. I am determined to find it. So just give me a second. I probably passed it, but it's here. Here's Zane. Wow. Wow, Zane. Del. This one. Yep. Yeah, this is it. This is what it looks like. Wow, Zane. Del. So if you if you do this, do a search. Get you back here. You'll see there's 13 pages. And these are all the different forms of promise. You can see here. You know, law church in your hearts again, the promises. And you hear about all the different promises. So Satan makes some promises, creates in them false desires. False. It's not true desires. He just purifies. What's harmful for you? That's why it's false. Placebo. Placebo policies, placebo solutions, placebo. Makes it feel good, look good, pleasurable, but it's actually harmful. So it says again, promises are nothing but deception. So again, because you realize it's deception, it's no longer tempting. And I did again a theme about can men and women play games? If you don't like somebody playing games with you, then you don't play games with others. So that's why, again, you don't really study the tactics of Satan. Because you don't really want somebody to be playing games with you. And you don't play games with others. You know, but if that's how you communicate, then the person's like, okay. You have to find your crowd. You know, you got to find that. Uh, company which likes to in communicate and engage with Kay, but um somebody who doesn't like it doesn't find it tempting it just invites me to cut you off you know i i can't be around people who think around those lines again but those who believe and do good deeds of righteousness we shall admit them to gardens with rivers flowing beneath to dwell there and forever the lost promise is true <clears throat> talked about Satan's promise is false. It's all based on deception, again, placebo, uh, beautification, a false beautification of gains. And here, those who believe and do good deeds of righteousness, Allah has promised forgiveness and a great work. I was I was reading, and I, I have not verified it, so but that and Mossad has done this more than once. 
where they would send like a beautiful woman. Like they did that for the person who disclosed that they had a nuclear arms. And they used that as a way to trap the person. And then they took them and they put them like in prison. I can't recall the guy's name, but it's, again, this is a practice that they do. They figure out what you like, what your heart inclines to. And then they play these games or these tactics um, to try to catch you and then to throw you either in prison. And I heard about that person who was caught in France with the telegram. Again, I didn't verify this, but that they sent like this beautiful woman to, again, mislead him. And that's how they were able to catch him in France. So something, again, to consider about that if faith is strong in your heart, um, those type of like tactics are hateful to you. You don't like to play them on others. You don't like others to play them on to you. Not just what Mossad is doing, but what the women were used to catch people to manipulate. Um, and so the companions of the garden will call out to the companions of the fire. We have indeed found the promise of our Lord to us true. Have you also found your Lord's promise true? They shall say yes, but a crier shall proclaim between them and the curse of God is upon the wrongdoers. So I don't want to go into the whole issue, but 13 pages, you can review them, look at the scholarly commentary. And, but what I will be focusing on this month, and that's the point of this video, is about the divine promise. And the divine promise was to send a messenger between Prophet Jesus upon him peace and Prophet Messenger Muhammad uh, upon him peace and blessings. There was like a period of 600 some years and the world was in darkness. Um, God gave opportunity for those again for the world to recognize the need. So that, you know, it was not like God is in need of our belief, but we are in need of guidance. We are in need of someone role modeling faith, teaching us its beauty, not through again tactics, manipulation, placebo, but acting and living, role modeling the faith. And so he is the again, the light. The prophets are light to God. So to send us prophets and messengers to guide humanity to the truth and to use this world as a farm. This promise also reflects other divine promises, as I mentioned in here. Most impor importantly, the promised day I mentioned, the reference to the day of judgment. And just to give you again about how prophets are light so that those who misuse or misapply religion can be distinguished from those who are genuine and true. They're full of faith. They're full of light in their hearts. And on their tongues, it's not about beautifying speech. It's about beautifying. It's a light within they receive from God. They role model. They live it. And they give it, bring it into the world. In the Quran, when God speaks about Prophet Moses, these were people who preferred to be with God. They were not people who were running, seeking a crowd. They wanted people to praise them on stage, you know. Uh, so he was, he, you know, when they crossed the Red Sea and people were safe from the Pharaoh, he was running up to the mount as a way to kind of be alone with God, pray, worship God. God asked him, what has made thee Asked in advance of thy people, O Moses. So are people who love to be alone, praying, worshiping God. He replied, this is Moses' upon a piece. Behold, they are close to my footsteps. I hasten to thee, O my Lord, to please thee. Again, they're seeking God's pleasure. They don't wrestle with God, but they're seeking his pleasure. What will make God pleased with them. So they're judging themselves based on what pleases God. 
Allah said, we have tested thy people in thy absence. The Samari has led them astray. And the Samari, I compared him with Moses to show how a, a person who misapplies faith sounds like. And it helps us to study these two like uh, characters to help us differentiate in our community how somebody of faith acts and how somebody of faith, non, like, you know, using faith, misapplying faith, like they're using it as a weapon or as a tool. Samari was interested like in being kind of worshipped by the people, if you will. He wanted to be on stage. He wanted people to notice him. He wanted to be kind of the prophet. He saw it as a position, a VIP status. Moses was thinking about nurturing his people. And he was nurturing his people to please God. He was trying to help his people, nurture his people to, to please God. When that period of when he brought them past the Red Sea and they were safe from Pharaoh, he was not interested in you know getting their claws or cheerleading. He was interested in going to worship God. Furthermore, this is again, I mentioned this. A Samari overpowered him. Aaron, the English name. In Arabic, it's Harun. Known as, again, Prophet Harun, pawn in peace. Mankind keeps plotting and planning to hide the truth. K, tactics, uh, way to hide the truth, mislead, beautify, falsehood, deception. God frustrates their thoughts and plans by bringing forth the truth. This passage is about another divine promise regarding those who plot and plan to hide the, mess, the true message of monotheism. So I gave you again an example of false with false with true. The reason I say that is so people don't take this as an attack on any faith community. So it says Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Those who are with him are strong against the unbelievers and unbelievers again I believe I've mentioned this more than once not someone who doesn't who hasn't studied the argument of faith it's or is ignorant of it I gave that with Delcus but somebody who they know but they hide compassionate amongst each other I will see them bow and prostrate themselves in prayer. Seeking grace from Allah and his good pleasure. On their faces are their marks being the traces of their prostration. This is their similitude in the Torah. The Torah. There are people who are very true and genuine worshipping and their similitude in the gospel, the Bible. It's like a seed which sends forth its blade, then makes it strong, and then becomes thick, and it stands on its own stem, filling the sours with wonder and delight. As a result, it fills the unbelievers with rage at them, because they plotted and planned to hide the truth, but then the truth again came about. Law has promised those among them who believe and do righteous deeds can't just be placebo, beautification of words. It has to be taken into action. Promise forgiveness and a great reward. So the coming theme will be about Muhammad, the divine promise. And this is where I mentioned here, this tree. We're all seeds. And if we turn to God to seek his bounty, and his grace, then we turn into these trees that, if you will, bring light and goodness into society, uh, not just for us, but also for future generations. So, again, my style of teaching is pointing out to you the moon and the stars. And so I like to study the faith, the arguments of the faith, the book. And those who have been true in that journey. And that's what I like, I will be doing. I'll be referencing 
again, these scholars, the beautification of faith, which is based again, starts from a seed in the heart and then spreads all out, bringing light, goodness, fruits that benefits society, benefits even like the animals, benefits everything in the world. So that will be the coming theme. And this is a transition video towards that theme. It is the beautification of faith beyond placebo. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullah. Barakatuh.